Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the module 3 of DVMA super important question. These are taken from the previous papers. Don't miss any of these questions. These are the super important ones. And before starting, please do like and subscribe. It helps me make more videos like this. So without wasting more time, let's get started. If you have any questions, you can DM on Instagram here. So what the first question is, what is normalization? Okay, so what is normalization and explain 1NF, 2NF and 3NF, which means the normalization forms 1NF, 2NF, 3NF. Okay, with examples you have to explain. What is normalization? Normalization is the process of organizing data in a relational database. Okay, so we are organizing the data here. The data is present and we are organizing it in the form of rows and columns. Okay, in a database to reduce the redundancy and improve data integrity. It involves dividing large table into smaller data tables. Okay, so one large table is there instead of putting it in one large table. We are dividing into smaller large table connected by foreign key references. Okay. So that is called as normalization. So why do we do normalization to improve the data integrity and reduce the redundancy? Okay. So the first normal form one NF. Okay. What is the definition? It contains only atomic values, which is the indivisible values. Each column contains values of a single type. Okay. And each record is unique. Okay. For example, if this is the table we have here, as you can see, this subject has two values. It is not indivisible. It has two values. Okay. So it is not in one NF. So what we can do? For the roll number one and the name John, we can take math as one row and second row will have roll number one, John and physics like that. Okay, so there will be roll number one here and John will be here and max and physics will be here. 2NF. 2NF means our table is in 2NF if it is in 1NF and no partial dependency exists. Okay, non key attributes depend on the whole primary key, not part of it. Okay, what it means is, for example, see if we are considering this one, the name is present here as John and the department is present as science. Okay. And the maths and physics are the subjects, and roll number is one here. Okay, so as you can see, roll number, name, and department both are uh, common here, and subject is math and physics. So we have a composite key which is roll and subject. Okay, roll and subject is present here, but here for one it is maths, and for one it is physics. It is depending only on the role, not the full key, which is role and subject. Okay, because uh, the subject becomes redundant here. Because by using one, we get John and science here. Again, by using one, we can get John and science here. So in this case, if you observe like this kind of scenario, what you have to do is you have to separate it into two tables. First is student table, which will have one John and science, and second table will have the role number one and this associated subjects, math and physics. Okay. Next one is 3NF. In 3NF, it is required that the table is to be uh, in 2NF initially, and then there is no transitive dependency existing. Okay, then it will be in 3NF. So, uh, our violation example is as follows roll number 1, 2, and name John Alice, department science, art, and HOD is Dr. Smith and Brown. Now, HOD means head of department, and head of department depends upon the department, okay, not on the roll number or name, right? So, it has to be separated, okay, otherwise, there will be a transitive dependency. The non key attribute depends on another non key attribute. Key attribute is roll number, it should always depend upon the roll number. Now, for that, what we'll do roll number, name, and department will take separate, and department and HOD will take a separate. Okay, so that then it will be in 3NF form. Next, uh, explain informal design guidelines for relational schema design. Okay, there are four informal design guidelines like how we should design the relational schema. Okay, so the first is semantics should be clear in the schema means the meaning. Whatever we make the table, it should be meaningful, not X Y Z. Okay, and re uh, reducing redundant information in the tuples. If it is having duplicate values and uh, those things, you have to reduce it. And reducing null values in the tuples. Okay, we have to uh, reduce as much as possible the null values and disallowing the possibility for generating spurious tuples. Spurious means false tuples. If we mix two tables, there will be some tuple generated which was not existing in either of the table because a combination of that gen gets generated. Okay, like for example. If I have apple and uh, um, ball, okay, apple and ball here, and different kinds of apple and different kinds of balls are present here. Like for example, apple one with ball one, apple two with ball two, apple three with ball three. Now, if I combine it, what will happen? Apple one with ball two and apple one with ball three also comes as a combination, right? So that will generate spurious tuples which was not initially present. Okay, so that is called as the uh, that we have to disallow okay the possibility for creating the gen uh, generating the uh, spurious tuples so first one imparting clear semantics to the attributes in a relation all the relations present in the table should have proper meaning associated with them so for example if the company relational database is there the tables will be employee department department location project works on and all these values are meaningful right so that is the first uh, thing you have to have meaningful names okay next is 
redundant information should uh, in the tuple should not be there and update anomalies we have to handle it okay redundancy should be reduced to increase the space efficiency now three types of anomalies can happen insertion anomaly in insertion means insertion of any data may cause issue for example if someone tries to create a new department initially there would be no employees right obvious it is if new department is created initially there will be no employees but that we cannot save it in the database why because in database uh, along with the department we have to have the um, employee details also right who is working on the department so initially it is empty means employee will be null employee being null means employees uh, id will also be null employee id null is not possible because it's a primary key right so that is the uh, insertion anomaly next is deletion anomaly suppose that one employee is working for chemistry department and that employee uh, we delete from the database so what will happen that information about chemistry department also gets deleted because that only person was uh, working on the chemistry department so that is deletion anomaly modification anomaly means if we change uh, the manager's department for example from four to five this change has to be reflected in all the employees uh, database otherwise uh, in the manager's database it will be five and the employees database who uh, suppose we ask an employee who is your manager and which department he is he will look in his table and it will be still four only if you don't update in the employee database as well so we have to update everywhere that is the modification anomaly that we have to avoid okay the third one is null values in the tuple null values can come in tuple due to various reasons it can be due to some or more missing attributes okay it can give wrong results when considered with operations such as sum or join okay if some values are null and we calculate the average it will give us wrong average because it is considering some rows in in the uh, finding out average which has no values only okay and somewhere nulls are necessary because the attribute uh, visa status may not apply to us students okay and uh, attribute for the tuple is unknown for example date of birth may not may be unknown for an employee and uh, known but absent like for example someone's phone number we know that phone number exists for that person but it is not recorded in the database so there will be null values okay so these are the exceptions apart from that it should be handled um, to avoid the null, null values the fourth one is generation of spurious tuple this i discussed in the join operation when you join two tables some impossible combination values could be created okay that we have to um, have a look and uh, handle it properly okay next one is what is functional dependency write an algorithm to find minimal cover for the set of functional dependency construct the minimal cover for the given set okay so what is functional dependency it is a constraint okay it is what it is a constraint between two sets of attributes from the database between two set of attributes what is the constraint that is called as functional dependency okay a functional dependency denoted by x goes to y between two sets of attributes x and y are the subset or specifics of a constraint a constraint on the possible tuples that can form relation state r of r the constraint is that for any two tuples t1 and t2 if we have two tuples t1 and t2 in r such that t1 of x is equal to t2 of x then obviously it should be t1 of y is equal to t2 of y as well okay that is the functional dependency so if ssn goes to e num and p number goes to p num and p location ssn and p number can go to r's okay like that now see let's have a look at the functional dependencies uh, this question is given right b goes to a d goes to a and a b goes to d the first thing what you have to ensure is that in the right side there should be single letter okay if it's not single letter separated we'll have a look at that also here there is single letter so we'll keep it as such okay now we have to next step is to see if this can be removed if b goes to a is removed by using these two can i again derive b goes to a by using these two can I again derive b goes to a i cannot derive right because d goes to a is here and ab goes to d is here there is no way i can derive b goes to a so i'll keep it suppose i remove d goes to a by using these two can i derive d goes to a i cannot if i remove this can i derive ab a, a, goes to uh, d from this i cannot so i'll keep it as such now after uh, checking that next what i have to do next you have to consider the left part okay left part if there are one values we'll keep it as such if there are two values like for example ab is there ab can be written as a goes to d and b goes to d separated okay ab goes to d can be written as a goes to d and b goes to d now after writing a goes to d and b goes to d what you can observe is a can be removed since b goes to a is present and a is redundant in ab okay what it means is in ab goes to d okay see i can uh, remove either a or b okay how we how we'll uh, get to that conclusion first we have to see if a is redundant or not a is redundant means from the other one which is b from b can i derive a from b can i derive a yes from b i can derive a so i'll be removing a here it is not needed because b anyways handles a here right so i'll be removing a from here like that can i remove b i cannot remove b because from a i cannot derive b in these two scenarios from a there is no scenario here so from a b can't be derived but from b a can be derived so 
uh, a will be removed here okay from b a can be derived so a is redundant and um, b will be kept okay now b goes to d will be kept so the remaining ones are if b goes to a d goes to a, and b goes to d now if you observe carefully b goes to d and d goes to a so indirectly b goes to a also right b goes to d and d goes to a means b goes to a also so b goes to a this is redundant here this also can be removed so finally we will have d goes to a and b goes to d this is the final answer okay next explain the types of update anomalies in sql with example okay now see update anomaly the occurs when the multiple um, the same data is duplicated in multiple rows and an update in one place but not the others cause inconsistency okay what does this mean is for example if the student 101 is here alice is here dbms and network and professor Rao and professor kumar now if alice changes the name to some other name that other name has to be reflected in all the rows if it is reflected in one row and not in other what will happen the different name will be a different name will be here it will be considered as two separate students and both will have same student ID then the confusion will happen so ensure that whenever the update is happening it should happen in all rows if you forget one row inconsistency occurs that is the update anomaly second is insertion anomaly if suppose you want to insert a new course okay a new course you want to insert but the condition is that student ID and student name should also be there without having any students you can't create a new course in the database okay because student ID student name should be there you can't insert the null values there this restricts the data validity this is the insertion anomaly the deletion anomaly means if one uh, person is there in one particular department and that person's name I remove means this department information will also be lost okay so that is a deletion anomaly we cannot uh, delete that row okay Next, illustrate, insert, update, delete, alter, and drop commands in SQL. Okay, so insert means inserting a new values in the data table. Okay, so insert into table name, the columns are given here and the values are given here. You have to insert the uh, values in the given columns for the table name. Okay, for example, insert into students, student ID name age as 101 Alice and 20. Okay, update. In update, we are modifying the existing data in the table. So this is the syntax update table name, which columns you want to update with what values, where, which condition. Okay. It means update the student table where uh, set the age as 21 where student ID is 101. So whoever the student is 101 set their age as 21 in the database. Delete means removing the data from the table. Delete from the table name where condition means if you want to delete the student number 101 delete from student table the student ID 101. Okay means the whole row will be deleted. Okay with, uh, with uh, whoever has 101 student ID. And if you don't uh, mention any where clause, what will happen is delete from students will delete all the rows in the table. Okay, so student uh, table will then be empty. Next, alter. Alter means modify the structure of a table, means add, remove, rename columns. Okay, if you want to add a new column to the student uh, table, if suppose in student table you forgot to add email, how you will do that? You will not create another table after deleting. Instead, what you will do, you will use alter command. Alter table students add email where care 100. So email will be added as another column in the student database. Okay, next is modify a column data type if suppose you inserted the age as string okay but you want it as integer only so alter table students modify age as int okay drop a column means you want to delete one column okay if you want to delete one column which table you want to delete alter table students drop column which column name email okay drop means permanently delete a table or database okay drop table student means it will delete the student table from the database so all the uh, uh, rows in that table and the table itself gets deleted okay Next, explain inference rules in function dependency with proof. Okay, inference rules we will be using in functional dependency, which I just discussed at the top. What is functional dependency and what are the rules we follow? Okay, I, I have shown you one example, right? The numerical. So that how we solved it by using the rules. Okay. The first rule is reflexivity means if x goes to y okay if x goes to y means suppose if x goes to a and b then a and b can derive either a and or, or b okay so a goes to b can derive a okay if y is a subset of x then x goes to y okay now y is a subset of x means x is here and y is a part of it so x goes to y means x uh, is dependent upon y okay like that next augmentation augmentation means x goes to y then we can write x, x z goes to y z we can add z on both the places that will not make any difference okay x is transitivity if x goes to y and y goes to z it's pretty straightforward that x goes to z okay then derived secondary rules okay x goes to y and x goes to z means we can write x uh, x x goes to y z okay like that we can combine y and z that is union next is decomposition if x goes to y z that means x goes to y dash and z dash okay a subset of y and z okay pseudo transitivity x goes to y and w y goes to z then i can write 
w x goes to z okay instead of y i can replace it with x why because x goes to x uh, x goes to y so instead of y i can replace it with x so it will become w x goes to z okay examples are also given here a goes to b and b goes to c that means a goes to c okay so by using transitivity and using augmentation a goes to b what i can write ad goes to bd okay and by union what i can write a, a goes to b and a goes to c i can write it as a goes to bc okay so these are about the uh, rules in functional dependency okay let's take another example here consider two sets of functional dependency f and e now we have to uh, prove that is there it is it equivalent or not okay so what we'll do so let's go step by step let's take the first case which is f okay a goes to c ac goes to d e goes to ad and e goes to h what i told you the first step is check the right side it should have single letter okay if it does not have single letter separate it if we separate this what it will become e goes to i and e goes to d rest remains same okay now none of them can be removed since remaining data do, uh, does not derive the remote okay now see if i remove this one a goes to c by using any of these i a goes to c okay now if i remove this i cannot uh, by other ones i can uh, derive this one okay so here none of the data can be removed since the remaining data don't derive the remove okay next what we have to do we have to check the left side left side should be single letter but if it is double letter we have to um, do the processing on it so ac goes to d is present here okay now we will check if c can be removed or a can be removed okay how do we check that if you want to remove c then a should derive c okay a, a is deriving c so i can remove c from here but i cannot remove a if i remove a c should derive a in none of this case a c is deriving a so i'll be removing c only because a, a, a is deriving c and uh, c is redundant here so a goes to d remains so the, now the things are a goes to c a goes to d e goes to a and e goes to d and uh, e goes to h if you observe carefully e goes to a and a goes to d that means e goes to d is deriving from these two and e goes to d here is redundant so remove e goes to d so when we remove e goes to d what will be remaining it uh, what will be remaining with is a goes to c a goes to d e goes to a e goes to h by using the union property i can write a goes to c d and e goes to a h i am just combining the left parts okay so if you combine the left parts i'll get a goes to c d and e goes to a h and that is nothing but which they have given here a goes to c d and e goes to a h okay hence both are equivalent like that we have to do okay we have to derive it till the end and then if it is coming as same that means it's equivalent okay that's all for the module 3 of dbms and if you want this video helpful please like and subscribe it helps make more like this and thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next